This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Hidden classified documents in DC offices and flashy Florida golf clubs, a gold-obsessed billionaire and the President of the United States. You'd be forgiven for thinking this was the setup to a new Bond film, but far from the glamour and poise of 007 is the dizzy series of events that has both Donald Trump and President Joe Biden in hot water over their handling of classified documents. So in this video, we're going to explore the new investigation over Biden's recently uncovered classified vice presidential documents, see how his actions stack up against those of the former president, and figure out what this means for Biden's political future as the 2024 election looms on the horizon. First, what just happened? Well, late Monday night, it was revealed that President Biden's personal attorneys had discovered around 10 highly classified documents in a private office used by Biden between mid-2017 and 2019. This office was part of the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement, a Washington DC-based think tank run by the University of Pennsylvania. After his stint as vice president, Biden had accepted an honorary professorship from the university, entitling him to the use of the DC office as well as speaking fees for various university engagements. Biden's team of personal attorneys discovered the first batch of classified documents on November 2nd, 2022, just six days prior to the midterm elections and 86 days after the FBI discovered classified documents at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. At the time, they didn't make this discovery public for reasons that are unclear. But on Monday last week, a source close to the investigation told CNN, and it's been headline news ever since. Worryingly, at least some of these 10 or so documents were marked as SCI, or Sensitive Compartmented Information, a designation only used for some of the most sensitive intelligence from highly valued sources. To help with the investigation, Biden's aides started sifting through documents stored at other locations, and on Wednesday, they found a second batch of documents at an undisclosed location. Things got even worse for Biden on Thursday, when aides found a third batch of documents in the garage of his Delaware home. Concern for the security of these documents is so high that the National Archives has requested the Department of Justice investigate the matter, and Attorney General Merrick Garland has since appointed Robert K. Hur as special counsel to investigate. So what exactly were in these documents? Well, at time of writing, we don't know what was in the second or third batches, but the first batch dates from 2013 through 2016, and documents cover a range of topics, including Ukraine, Iran, and the UK. Some of the classified documents were placed in a manila folder, labelled as personal, alongside other documents covered by the Presidential Records Act. At this point, all this may start to sound vaguely familiar. As you might remember, back in August, President Trump was found in possession of both highly classified SCI documents and presidential records. Trump's classified documents pertain to Iran and China, and he claimed them as his own personal property. While these situations do look strikingly similar at first glance, there's some important differences to keep in mind that change both the legal and political fallouts from this incident. The first difference is the scale of the discoveries. The main difference is how the government ended up receiving these documents from each president after their discovery. Trump was routinely asked for documents by the National Archives and resisted the request despite knowing he had such documents at his own office. For example, in September 2021, Trump's personal lawyers had told the National Archives that the boxes sent to Mar-a-Lago had absolutely no classified information within them, a claim we now know to be false. In contrast, Biden's lawyers alerted the National Archive to the discovered documents immediately. So Biden was more forthcoming with his documents, but surely leaving classified and unclassified presidential records in a private office are violations of the Presidential Records Act, right? Well, it's not as simple as you may suspect. 
even though the Presidential Records Act requires all presidents and vice presidents to take, quote, every practical step to preserve their presidential records in accordance with National Archive procedures, the law lacks any enforcement mechanism. In effect, this means that violating the law has no real consequence. This is why former President Trump's warrant to raid Mar-a-Lago made no reference to the Presidential Records Act, instead opting to look for documents pursuant to the Espionage Act. While the details and breadth of the Espionage Act could take up a whole other video, the important part is that the Espionage Act makes it illegal to knowingly retain defence information when they aren't allowed to have such documents. And while both presidents seem to have harboured classified information outside of their terms in office, Biden doesn't appear to have knowingly done so, which is why Trump still has legal battles to fight over his retention of classified documents. But Biden looks to be in the clear. That is, assuming that more batches aren't found soon, in which case Biden's claim that he didn't know about his misplaced documents will become a bit implausible. Nonetheless, whilst he might be in the clear legally, the discovery has created a series of political headaches for Biden. Chief among them is how he will explain all of this to the newly formed Republican-controlled House of Representatives. Many congressional Republicans have come out swinging against Biden in recent days, signalling that investigations of the president over his handling of classified documents are going to be a priority in the new Congress. House Oversight Committee Chair Representative James Comer spoke to Fox News to decry the perceived incongruity between the treatment of Trump and Biden and noted that his committee would in fact be conducting an investigation of Biden over his handling of these records. Representative Andy Briggs chimed in to state that Biden, as vice president, had no authority to declassify the information he retained after leaving office, and echoed Trump's questionable claim that all his classified documents were declassified by virtue of the fact that Trump thought they were. Complex constitutional questions aside, it's clear that Republicans are trying to cast Biden's classified documents woes as clearly criminal while Trump's remain legally ambiguous pending special counsel investigation, and Biden should now expect an even more hostile relationship with the House. Another political headache revolves around the timeline of how these documents got to the Penn Biden Center office. The University of Pennsylvania announced Biden's honorary professorship on February the 7th, 2017, 18 days after he completed his term as vice president and months before he was said to use his Penn Biden Center office. Given that the documents related to events that occurred between 2013 and 2016, there are questions of when and why these classified documents and presidential records arrived at the Penn Biden Center. Clearly, while he might not be in too much legal trouble, Biden should expect this political issue to drag on for the foreseeable future. With things like this continuing into 2023, it's easy to feel that the world is an increasingly unsafe place. Fortunately, when it comes to your personal life and digital safety, NordVPN has your back. It's an unfortunate reality that online scams and phishing attacks are on the rise right now. With us getting bombarded by emails from our banks, social media accounts, and even annoying newsletters we forgot we even signed up to, it's easy to click the wrong thing. One weak link can compromise security and bring things crashing down. With the protection of NordVPN though, you can use their threat protection features to identify potentially suspicious links. Even if you did reach a suspicious website, NordVPN's data encryption tools would protect against a number of other attacks like malicious man-in-the-middle breaches. Even if things do go wrong, NordVPN's dark web monitoring is always scanning for your details and passwords, and can actively notify you before you even notice. It's easy to think that it won't happen to you, or that you won't be fooled, but these scams are pretty subtle, and when we see even massive firms falling for it, it's worth protecting yourself as much as you can. So click the link in the description, or go to nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR to get a huge discount on their two-year plan, and with their 30-day money-back guarantee, you've got nothing to lose. Thanks for your support, and make sure to click the link in the description.